right, we are back with the Wednesday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'm still battling this uh, kind of cold I have, and so uh, my voice is still a little bit, a little bit shaky this evening, and so I might have to uh, stop and guzzle a little water as we go through things. But we got a lot to talk about this evening after, uh, frankly, kind of a boring weather pattern for the last handful of weeks. We haven't had any uh, severe weather. We haven't had any big ticket weather makers necessarily. Uh, we had a little bout of early wintry weather a couple weeks ago, but other than that, it's been kind of ho-hum. Things are about to change, though, as we head towards Friday and the weekend. We'll start out this evening again like we did the last evening with a little bit of a time-lapse action across the area today. This is our Niles camera catching the sunrise this morning. We just had a veil of serious clouds for a time uh, today. Generally, though, crystal clear out there as we go through this Wednesday evening. Let's go down to the tropics where we have now Hurricane Nicole. Uh, it didn't really matter much if this stayed a tropical storm or became a minimal Category 1 hurricane. The impacts are going to be about the same for the ba <coughs> pardon me, the Bahamas and the coast of Florida as well. This will make landfall later on tonight north of Miami, south of Melbourne, maybe Fort Lauderdale area on north. And it will, of course, weaken as it heads... Uh, <coughs> pardon me, it's still a struggle. As it heads across the uh, peninsula as we go into the day on Thursday, but Nicole will have big impacts for millions and millions of people in the eastern U.S., not just Florida, and this includes our television viewing area as we go into Friday. In the meantime, what a setup tomorrow across the middle of the country. We have blizzard warnings out for parts of the Dakotas and northwestern Minnesota in southeastern Minnesota. Severe thunderstorms, pretty likely, to threaten that part of the region uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, uh, parts of Wisconsin, Iowa, northern Missouri, all the way down into Kansas as well. So this is a dynamic low-pressure system heading through the upper Midwest and dragging, <coughs> pardon me, a cold front onto the east. Now this front will usher in the cooler air for us by the weekend, but in the near term, clouds increase late Thursday, and then the timing on the rain on Friday, as you <coughs> pardon me, as you head out the door Friday morning, I think it's going to start raining in most spots, and it's going to continue raining throughout the day. Some of this rain can be heavy, uh, some real downpours, especially I think as we get into the afternoon and perhaps early in the evening. Uh, this will be a very efficient rain producing setup with all this tropical moisture, <laughs> pardon me, tropical moisture coming to the north and interacting with this fairly strong cold front. Uh, you know, this could be a real humdinger of a rain producer for a time, especially in the afternoon on our Friday. Then the rain tapers off and ends Friday evening. We'll be in between weather features on Saturday, a cooler day, but the true colder air will, will uh, lurk behind this next weather disturbance, which will pivot through Saturday night and perhaps kick up some uh, scattered lake effect uh, snow showers and flurries Saturday night into parts of Sunday and maybe even some small accumulations here and there. Rainfall totals have come up over the last 24 hours. Our models are now firmly in this camp right here, two to three inches worth of rain. Good thing this isn't snow. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have uh, this amount of moisture in a snow event, but uh, the track of this system, if it were the dead of winter, this would be still a, a humdinger of a uh, snow event. But yeah, we're not alone in this. All of eastern Ohio, the panhandle of West Virginia, western PA, firmly in the bullseye for heavy amounts of rain. I think two to three inches will be a good bet. And for a lot of us, this will equal, if not surpass, the amount of rain that we've seen over the last 30 days. Generally, in our TV viewing area, we've seen an inch and a half to three inches worth of rain over the last month. Uh, we'll get that, and perhaps even more than that, in just 12 to 15 hours on Friday. So if you didn't uh, do this uh, chore already, uh, try to take advantage of Thursday's great weather if you can. And make sure your gutters and your storm drains are clear of any leaves, because if they're stopped up with gunk and leaves, uh, with this much rain coming on Friday, uh, you could have a problem on your hands, both on your home, on your roof, and also in your neighborhood, on the streets, if things are clogged up. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, clogged drains and uh, sewage systems on uh, Friday. Storm drains, I should say. As we uh, go into the afternoon and evening, this could be especially problematic. Speaking of Friday evening, uh, you know, the handful of teams that are still alive in the high school football playoffs across our region are going to have to endure some rain uh, if they're playing Friday evening. Uh, Saturday evening will be better. Friday evening, though, soggy at the start. I think rain chances will decrease from west to east during the second half of our games on Friday evening, but it's a sure bet it's going to be just pouring rain 
afternoon, very early in the evening, with a gusty northwest wind as well. All right, Saturday night into Sunday, the colder air is here, so say goodbye to the rain. It's lake effect snow showers and flurries for most of our TV viewing area. This won't amount to much, but could someone see an inch or so worth of snow, possibly? Parts of uh, Trumbull, Mercer County, so yeah, I think that's possible. Some of the usual suspects when you have kind of a lake-enhanced lake effect event, so Mesopotamia, Kinsman, Greenville, places like that, and especially off to the north into Ashtabula County, Erie County, PA, southwestern New York as well. We'll, we'll hone in the, on this a little bit more at the end of the week. Well, congratulations to Miami. In the 6-10 to 10 day outlook today put out by the Climate Prediction Center, Miami is the only, in southeastern Florida in general, the only spot with any orange or yellow on the map in the 6-10 to 10 day outlook. Obviously, this is a really cold pattern coming our way next week for most of the lower 48 states. Locally, how cold will it be in terms of high temperatures? We'll be a good 10 to 15 degrees below average for a lot of the, the period, starting this weekend and taking us into next week. And, you know, I think this pattern even goes beyond the 10-day the period and takes us probably through about, or maybe just before Thanksgiving, then I am seeing signs that it will be a milder pattern from about roughly Thanksgiving through maybe the first handful of days of December. My annual winter forecast is coming up a week from tomorrow on the 17th day of November. One of the things we'll be uh, focusing on this year, and I, you know, I haven't talked about this much in past versions of the winter forecast, but I've, you know, kind of gotten more familiar with this, uh, with this uh, idea. This is something called the MJO. You know, this can come kind of alphabet soup a little bit when we talk about different uh, teleconnections and different indices. Uh, you've got your IOD, you've got your NAO, you've got your PDO. Uh, AMO, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and now we're going to throw on the MJO, which stands for Madden Julian Oscillation. Basically, it's a cluster of thunderstorms that circles roughly the equator or just north of the equator pretty routinely, and sometimes it's a little more organized and, and robust. It's more less, or I should say, it's less organized and less robust other times. Uh, when the cluster of thunderstorms uh, is in kind of uh, this part of the Indian Ocean, eastern Indian Ocean, over towards Indonesia, uh, the maritime continent, uh, north of Australia. Uh, this tends to favor uh, or instigate, in a handful of days after this, it tends to instigate warmer weather in the eastern U.S. and has an impact on the jet stream downstream from this area, way on the other side of the globe. When this cluster of thunderstorms then keeps progressing eastward, if it stays organized and robust and holds together all the way into the Western Pacific, then that can also have downstream implications and perhaps turn the weather colder in the Eastern US as we go into the winter season. Now, sometimes these big clusters of thunderstorms stay really strong and then kind of peter out as they pass into the Pacific and don't have too many downstream implications. Uh, but if they stay strong and, and go into sections of the Pacific that can favor uh, rising air in some places, sinking air in others, and troughs of low pressure can meander into the east with a little more vigor when the MJO uh, is looking like this, when these clusters of thunderstorms get into this zone in the western Pacific. So the MJO is something that can't be predicted real reliably more than a couple or a few weeks ahead of time, um, but what we can do on a seasonal scale is look where the water temperatures are especially warm and where they're especially warm, that will that warm water can act like a magnet for these clusters of storms. And you can say maybe as we go into the winter season, the MJO will favor certain parts of the Western Pacific and Eastern Indian Ocean where the water is particularly warm as we go into the winter season. So I'll be talking more about that in my annual winter forecast coming up a week from tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll rest my voice for the rest of this evening. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. I'll see you back here on Thursday.